Now, a more difficult problem comes up when it looks like there are multiple diagnoses or multiple actionable items on the behavioral and emotional needs section. So what do you do when the assessment is finished and hey, it turns out that there's a whole series of items in the behavioral and emotional needs section on the CANs um, that are rated twos or threes, which indicates they would benefit from treatment, or you have multiple um, diagnoses um, that have been provided. What do you actually do about that? How do you manage that? Well, one of the ways to do that is to start to think about these items in different buckets. So most broadly speaking, um, there are two large classes of disorders um, that uh, can be identified in the CANS behavioral and emotional needs section and uh, that are identified really in almost um, uh, any diagnostic system that we use. So uh, the, most, the broadest bucket is thinking about things as externalizing problems which present as acting out behavior and internalizing problems, which largely present um, as internally focused symptoms, those thoughts and moods um, that a person that is having that aren't immediately apparent to the people outside. Um, now they might present as irritability, um, in which case you can kind of see this like change in mood and touchiness um, about things. Um, but generally internalizing problems are, they're called invisible uh, problems many times. Um, and it, it's harder to see that they're there um, immediately. We also see two other classes of concerns that jump up um, in the cans so substance use um, concerns and then um, uh, reality distortion. Um, so psychosis and eating disturbances um, both involve um, fairly serious um, disturbances in the way that one, one is interpreting um, their self and their behavior and the environment around them. Um, <clears throat> so, so if you start to see several things that have been identified um, as um, actionable items or diagnoses, and you're thinking, well, how can we deal with all of these things? One way is to see, do they cluster into these categories? And if they start to cluster into these categories, then they should have common ways of being treated largely. Um, and so externalizing problems um, are, are gonna be treated by identifying what are ways to reduce um, some of these behaviors and put um, appropriate replacement behaviors uh, in place. These internalizing problems that we're gonna work on um, are the, the thoughts and ruminations um, that consistently trigger them um, or keep them going. Um, and then the ways to, um, uh, to replace uh, those behaviors and those concerns and that physiology um, with different ones. Uh, what is the number beside those, um, the, <laughs> those labels uh, relate to? The number beside those labels um, are something that, um, that we found um, in our research that would indicate that it's a very severe case. Um, so if you were to add together the CANS ratings um, on these items, uh, if you add it together across those four items on the externalizing um, dimension um, and you totaled to an eight uh, or higher, um, then you have a, a very serious externalizing concern um, and it, it warrants um, uh, immediate and focused treatment um, around it. If, ex if internalizing, it's also associated with um, higher rates of um, uh, aggressive and self-harming behaviors. Um, and that's true for um, the, the internalizing um, section two, paradoxically enough. Um, uh, so the internalizing, uh, if, it, if you add together the CANS ratings um, of those three items and it totals higher than uh, six or higher, um, it's a very severe case of internalizing concerns um, and it uh, denotes a need to, um, to address that intensively. Um, so that's, that's what the numbers are um, beside those. <clears throat> So 
So let's just go through um, a brief uh, exercise on um, making sense of these patterns. So these are the CANS items from behavioral emotional needs section. Um, if we were to look at um, this right here, uh, we'd identify that this is an actionable concern. So this is something rated a two or a three, and then um, be over there, should be over, sorry. <laughs> Uh, this is, or sometimes PowerPoint doesn't work in my favor. Uh, this should be over here on depression. Depression and adjustment to trauma should be the ones that are um, that are outlined. Um, and as we can see um, from our, our previous slide, what we would say is that those are internalizing concerns. Um, and so we would want somebody um, who can who can work with um, addressing these internalizing concerns. If we had um, a more complex pattern um, uh, that we see here. Uh, here we have, um, those are internalizing concerns. Here's we, here we have a pattern of clear externalizing concerns, right? Emotional, physical regulation, oppositional behavior and conduct are all related, to, are all rated to, uh, meaning that uh, they all uh, would benefit from treatment. Um, but then we see um, over here, um, that adjustment to trauma is also rated to two. So if we're trying to put together a treatment plan with this particular pattern um, of needs that had been identified, um, we would want to say, we would want to ask ourselves, um, is adjustment to trauma related? Is it, might it be a, a cause or, or a symptom of these, uh, these other concerns? So maybe something happened with this child and in fact, it is not only um, creating PTSD-like symptoms, but it's also creating um, these symptoms that look like dysregulation, opposition to authority figures, um, and then um, what is uh, rule-breaking um, behavior and potentially malicious behavior. Um, are they related to each other? So might adjustment to trauma be the root cause um, of these? Or might this be something where we need to identify what the priority is? Maybe the priority is addressing these, uh, this cluster of um, externalizing problems and then to move on um, to address the adjustment to trauma. Um, we would work with the therapist to do that and then to, uh, to put that down um, on the treatment plan. But instead of having four different things that we're working on at the same time, we can see that there's one cluster of three externalizing concerns, and then there's this adjustment to trauma concern. Um, and so it may only be that there are two things um, that we're focusing on um, in treatment. And so we just have to sequence those two things um, as opposed to trying to sequence four different things. So it's a way to try and make sense of a, a 